Have you ever wanted to make sulfuric acid from gypsum or hydrochloric acid from salt or more common things like making copper to chloride in less than a few days? The membrane shown in this video can help with that. Instead of relying on expensive membranes or purchasing like, like Nafion from dedicated shops, this is something you can prepare and do at home and has comparable chemical resistance to most reagents. It's me, Mr. Voice. It started with two pieces of cleaning cloth and a container of PVC cement. The PVC cement is then applied to the cloth. Make sure you get all the edges while spreading this uh, mixture. This must be done outside in a well-ventilated area as these fumes can cause you to get a little high, you know. Once one side of the cloth is coated with the glue, the cloth is then flipped over and the coating process is repeated. Once the coating process is done, I then allow the PVC cement to fully cure for one day. While that's curing, we can work on preparing the dechlorination solution. For this, what we need is a hot plate stir, beakers, an Erlenmeyer flask, and a digital scale. The reagents used in this uh, dechlorination solution are sodium hydroxide and a quaternary ammonium salt to act as a phase transfer catalyst. In this case, I'm using polyquaternium-7, but you can use any other cleaning solution which contains benzalkonium chloride or other quaternary ammonium salts like tetrabutyl ammonium iodide or whatever you've got lying around. Even shampoo works. All you have to do is just to make sure that the ingredients are in the material safety data sheet. The solution used in this video is 40 grams sodium hydroxide dissolved in 1 liter, which makes it a 1 molar solution. However, ideally, a 4 molar solution must be used. Turned on the stirring and added about 500 milliliters of water to the beaker along with sodium hydroxide. A glass rod was used to prevent it from sticking to the bottom of the beaker. The small beaker was then rinsed a few times to get the remaining sodium hydroxide out of it. Once everything is dissolved, I then weighed out 10 grams of polyquaternium-7. It came out as a viscous fluid, so we need to add water to thin this out. 50 milliliters of water was added and dropped in with a stir bar. Then I turned on the stirring to dissolve it. The beaker was then moved around a bit so the stir bar could get the rest of the goo. Once dispersed, I then added more water to the thin solution and then let it stir for a few minutes. The solution is then combined with a sodium hydroxide solution.
The beaker is rinsed twice with water. The last of the distilled water is then added to the beaker. So then the solution is left stirring for 3 minutes to dissolve everything and evenly mix it. And then it is transferred to an Erlenmeyer flask covered with saran wrap and stored until the PVC cement is fully cured. This is what the washcloth looks like after curing for one day. I then place the cloth into a large container and weight it down with two glass bottles. This is to prevent the cloth from floating as it's less dense than water. Once it's weighed down, I added all the dechlorinating solution to the container and tilted it to remove any air bubbles from under the cloth. A lid was then placed on the container and it is left to sit for 12 hours. After 12 hours, the dechlorinated PVC resin cloth was removed from the solution and rinsed with fresh water. After rinsing once, the water is replaced with fresh water and the cloth is left to sit under the water for about 6 hours. The dechlorinated PVC cloth was removed and the pH was checked. The cloth is rinsed and left under the deionized water for 6 hours again. The pH was checked one more time and the pH seems to be closer to neutral now. Now we will create the ion exchange resin layer. To do this, all we need is clear PVA glue, a citric acid, and a scale and something to stir it with. White glue will not work for this purpose as it doesn't contain polyvinyl alcohol but instead polyvinyl acetate which is non-reactive. 
The ratio of PVA glue to citric acid is 4 to 1. I'm using 20 grams of PVA glue followed by 5 grams of citric acid. All of the citric acid is then added to the glue and stirred until it is fully dissolved. Once that's done, a foil plate is made for the membrane to rest while it's in the oven. Then the PVA citric acid blend is pasted onto the dechlorinated PVC resin cloth. Once that is done, it is placed in the oven and set to 150 Celsius for 45 minutes. The temperature will rise above the set temperature and that's completely normal because of the oven's duty cycle. Once the membrane is out of the oven, I remove the foil from the membrane. The second membrane is a bit charred and this is because I did not use the thermocouple probe. You can clearly see why it's important to use a thermocouple when doing this. You can see when I turn the membranes, there is a sort of plastic layer on the membrane surface and this is the ion exchange resin. The membranes then need to be washed to remove any excess unreacted glue and citric acid present for about 5 minutes. After washing the membranes, to speed up the drying process, the membranes are then placed between two pieces of paper towel and a weight on top of it. Here I'm using a glass bottle. Once the membranes are dried, I remove the paper towels. Here at the top, you can clearly see what dechlorinated PVC resin looks like on the membrane surface. And at the bottom, that is what it looks like after baking it in the oven with the PVA and citric acid blend. I hope you all enjoyed this video. These membranes are very useful and I'm interested to see what you will use these membranes for.